and they usually see a Brazilian. And so the question that I'm asking Frances, and question number five, as our as our show is almost ready to wrap up, who is the best Brazilian player in Barca history? And I think there's eight clear choices. There have been a few more who've played minor roles and played less than 100 matches, but by and large, there are eight players that stand out to me. And while I think there are easy choices and um, not so easy choices, I think you and I have debated that it's pretty much come down to Ronaldinho and Danny Alves. Yes, I think Rivaldo has a shot as well. Um, I, I'm going to start with Rivaldo then. I thought Rivaldo was impressive in the in the seasons that he spent at Barca. He was with us for, I think it was six seasons from 96. 90- 97 through 02, yeah. Yeah, 97 to 02. Uh, made 157 appearances, scored 86 goals, some of them really important in the Champions League. Now, I have picked Rivaldo because I thought that obviously Ronaldinho is the obvious choice. But uh, Rivaldo held, held the club during a, te- during a time in which Barca was pretty much going nowhere. Uh, we had finished the very successful Johan Cruyff era, although the last couple of years were, were dodgy. Um, we had had Sir Robert Robson, uh, Bobby Robson, rather, um, in charge of the team. And uh, although we were successful and we had Brazilian Ronaldo in there, which probably, had he stayed longer, would be a contender for this list. And um, so we had a lot, of, a lot of money and it had to be spent somewhere. Rivaldo was excelling at Deportivo at the time and uh, he was signed and he made an instant impact. He lifted that team. Obviously, Luis Enrique was part of that team. And um, thinking back, it was the Dutch era. So we had Van Gaal as, as the manager. We had um, uh, Philippe Cocu. We had Reisiger. We had the De Boer brothers um, as part of the team. And uh, although it was a team that was quite strong and uh, made the Champions League semifinals, um, I think it was in 2002, then Rivaldo was... The was the player that really stood out. He was the one that took responsibility when it really mattered. And um, I think Rivaldo should be considered in the question of the best Brazilian ever. Although Ronaldinho, I think, because of what he meant for the club, should be number one. But I wanted to mention Rivaldo because of his impact. Yeah, I think that's the difference. Where um, Rivaldo, 86 goals is the most that a Brazilian player scored for Barcelona. And the Real Rivaldo and Ronaldinho, they both won the Ballon d'Or. And again, so proving themselves to be, for at least a season, the best player um, in the world. And Ronaldinho, 145 appearances for him, 70 goals. But you also talk about what he meant for the club. And he really did. He was that spark plug. I mean, for me in the United States, Barcelona, you know, when I was um, younger, it was just another club in the world. But then Ronaldinho comes and Pepe Guardiola and, and excuse me, Pepe, Pep Guardiola and Lionel Messi follow and really that the trio that chain almost a chain of events that led Barcelona to where they are today and Ronaldinho I think from a global perspective was what sparked all that so what just what he meant in his and he only played six seasons as well 03 to 08 um and so he did make less appearances than Rivaldo he had less goals um but he did he did win the Ballon d'Or and just what he could do with the ball it's just what he did was make Barcelona must-watch TV, even when he wasn't scoring goals. Just his tricks and bringing that Hugo Benito to Barcelona, to the Camp Nou, was just so important. And the other guy, as we had talked about, the guy with the most appearances, Danny Alves, for from 2008 to 2016, 247 appearances, so almost 250 appearances, which would be about 100 more than anybody else. Uh, he only had 14 goals, but again, you look at this season, and again, not a slight on Sergio Roberto, but you look at what Barcelona is on the right side without Danny Alves, and you clearly see that something is missing this season. Um, and I think at the beginning, I wasn't the biggest Danny Alves fan, but by the end of his time at Barcelona, even I had recognized that, I mean, he was so important at allowing Barcelona to play their style. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think with with the Ronaldinho argument, Ronaldinho brought the smile and the confidence back to the Camp Nou. Um, we can't forget that a couple of years earlier or throughout, the f- I think it was the f- five years prior to Ronaldinho's arrival, Real Madrid had been pretty much excellent. They had the Galacticos and uh, the Barcelona morale was, was down, really. And uh, Ronaldinho was the first sort of big, huge superstar at his peak that chose to come to Barca for a very long time. 
And uh, I think that although his first season, um, no titles were achieved, he he got that belief back in the players. Um, he was top class and uh, he really pushed everyone else on. I think without Ronaldinho, there wouldn't have been any Messi in the capacity that, that, that we know him today. Uh, I think his mentoring to Messi was, was world class. I think Xavi stepped up his game and got bits of Ronaldinho in his own game. Andres Iniesta, I think, is a product of Ronaldinho's influence. Um, so, yeah, I think Ronaldinho was, was very influential and uh, I would say one of the most important figures in, in recent Barca history. Then, I'm not going to mention for too long, but then he let himself go, didn't he? And uh, he started partying a little bit too much. He started coming late for training and uh, that's why he had to go. But uh, I think Ronaldinho, what, what myself and obviously the Kule fan base uh, keep is all of that energy, all of that belief, all of that euphoria that he brought back to the Catalan capital. And uh, we're, really, we're really grateful now and we'll be forever grateful for what he did for the club. Now, in terms of titles, I think Dani Alves has a very strong case to be the best Brazilian in Barca history simply because he helped us to so many titles. He was a very successful player before getting to us. He had won with Bahia, three titles. He won with Sevilla, uh, five titles, including two UEFA Cups. Uh, Barca, I, I can't even count this in front of me, but there's so many to count. I think it's around 22, 23, uh, including three Champions Leagues and one, two, three, six leagues. And uh, he has to be in, in the argument for best Brazilian ever to play at the Camp Nou. Um, obviously not an attacking player, in, uh, not, a, not a forward, but an attacking player in terms of freedom, in terms of willingness, in terms, to, in terms of co cooperative play. Um, Dani Alves remains the player that has given more goal assists to Messi uh, throughout Messi's career, which is one that um, Alves has joked is one of his most precious trophies, if you want to call it that. And uh, yeah, Danny Alves was, was outstanding. Then this season, I'm going to be honest, I am surprised that he's performing at the level that he has been in Juventus uh, because I thought his last season with Barca was relatively poor. Uh, I think that um, he wasn't getting on with the board too much and uh, he had that, that attitude towards the game and the board and the environment was sort of polluting his game. So uh, I have to admit that when he left on a free, I thought obviously free is too cheap to sell him on. But um, I thought that had they gotten five or six, seven million euros for him, I would have been, I would have been happy with that. Now I am delighted he's um, done so well for Juventus, but I am slightly surprised that he has. Well, Francis, I, I think to go back to Ronaldinho real quick, that ovation at the Bernabeu, um, for me, is a top Barcelona memory, and I think for me, endeared Ronaldinho forever. Um, and, and to your point for Danny Alves, I agree. I mean, I think while remembering his last season where he just didn't seem to, yeah, he just he, he just didn't seem to have all the skills he had had before. He just seemed to be slowing down. And while I, I don't want to necessarily remember those things as poor as the same thing with Ronaldinho, honestly, you know, their last few seasons before they they left just weren't the same as right in the middle of their Barcelona career, but we can't forget the sheer amount of winning um, and the sheer amount of success that they had at their peak when they were in a Blagrana uniform. Um, yeah, just two of the all-time best. And I, I think one guy, of course, everyone's like, well, what about Neymar? What about Neymar? Well, Neymar's already made over 100 appearances for the club, uh, 61 goals, but I think most fans would say that they hope that Neymar winds up being the number one when all is said and done, simply because, again, while... You you can look outside the club. You'd have to say that the heir the heir apparent to Messi is Neymar. So for Neymar, you know that he most likely will wind up. You know if he continues to stay at the clip he is, he'll wind up being the number one goal scorer for all Brazilians playing for the club. Um, and he's still you know in his early twenties. So Neymar still has plenty of time left to play in a Barcelona uniform. Yeah, I think Neymar wasn't even a thought for me when I was looking at the best Brazilian to ever play for Barca because for me, Neymar is, is nowhere near the end of his career. He's, what he has achieved so far, I think, and I hope, is going to be a tiny portion of, of what he will eventually achieve. I think he's got a lot of potential. He's playing alongside the best, in my eyes, the best two strikers, forwards, whatever you want to call it, in the world. Even playmaker in terms of Messi. He's got Suarez alongside him. 
He's got a really strong team behind him and uh, he's got a lot more to give than, than he has given so far. So uh, in my eyes, Neymar's journey is nowhere near finished, so he shouldn't be in the conversation for this. Now, going back to the very beginning, the reason for, for me asking this question today is that last week when we did the worst 11, <laughs> we didn't necessarily uh, leave Brazil in a very good position because we were talking about um, Enrique, we were talking about Keirison, we were talking about um, Douglas, who actually scored a goal for Sporting Gijón this week, I don't know. It's a spite us. I know, it's a miracle, it's a miracle. So uh, yeah, uh, I think the relationship between Barca and Brazil has been there for many years and uh, I didn't want to leave it with uh, Douglas being the one Brazilian that we talk about in the podcast. Uh, because there have been so many other brilliant Brazilians that have made a difference um, in the club's past, present and future. And there was a little of a gap too for um, Brazilian players making an impact at Barcelona. Um, you look back at you know the late 50s, early 60s, and Avaristo de Maceda, he was you know one of those guys in what you'd say is one of Barcelona's better groups of seasons. You know, it's coming off the 50s where Los Blancos just dominated the 50s. And right at the start of the 60s, when Barcelona had a few winning seasons, um, Macedo, 114 appearances in those six seasons, 78 goals, which is a better um, per goal, per game, excuse me, per goal per game percentage than, than Neymar has had so far. Um, and he was kind of the pioneer as far as successful Brazilians. Um, and I think any Brazilian list for Barcelona can't have him not on it. And then you look at when Brazilians started coming back to Barcelona, and that starts with Romario, of course, being part of those dream teams from 93 to 95, 46 appearances, 34 goals. Now, that's not a lot, 46 appearances, but yet, you know, 34 goals in that time, that means he only had 12 appearances where he didn't score a goal in a Barcelona, yeah. you know, well, per goal, per game. Of course, he had multiple goals in certain games. And then, not only that, but he's replaced by Ronaldo, who, again, most fans don't think of him too kindly simply because of, you know, the whole Real Madrid thing. But for Ronaldo, and that's the first Ronaldo, 37 appearances, 34 goals for Barcelona. It's just how good could Ronaldo have been if he had stayed with Barcelona? He would have, he would have been brilliant. But uh, then again, he didn't. He went to Madrid. So we don't really want to talk about him too much. And then the other, the, the, the final player I'll, I'll bring up on this list of successful Brazilian players is Adriano, of course. 114 appearances. He only had nine goals, but in 114 appearances, Adriano played on the left side, at the back, on the right side, at the back. He really just was exactly what a winning team needs, a team that wins a treble needs, and he's a guy that could be plugged into the lineup, and you don't really lose that much quality, and he was unselfish enough not to need to be a starter, but he was always seemingly pushing Jordi Alba and pushing Eric Abidal to be that starter but again Adriano was just a, a really good servant for the club and he's the kind of player that a utility man if you will that helps a winning club. Yeah Adriano was a fantastic player for us uh, because of the reasons that you listed. He was always willing to take a step back, he was always willing to take um, you know to leave Alves and, and the rest of, of, of the starting uh, fullbacks in that respect. Um, take, take the credit and uh, he was always ready for his chance. He was a team player and we will be forever grateful for that. Um, I don't think injuries really respected him and uh, he would have been even more important had he not been constantly injured, particularly in his last two, three seasons. But uh, Adriano was successful with Sevilla before getting to us and uh, he was a very, very useful player that made an impact. 